Hey everybody, welcome to Halid RV. My name is Josh and her name is 26RR Grey Wolf, coming in a little bit over 5,700 pounds. But it was not 5,720 some odd pounds, as Josh had stated. As my friend Andy Dufresne from Shawshank Prison will tell you, it was in fact 5,275 pounds dry weight. Once again, Josh should get caffeinated before recording these videos. Thank you and apologies for the confusion. As we see it, it'll be about 300 pounds more dry weight and black label. I'll do some probably separate footage information on that, but know that we do carry this in both variations. This is something that a lot of people are gonna say, half ton towable. A lot of people are gonna say, no, definitely not half ton towable. So why the variance? And I think it really depends on the specific trucking question and the uh, specific cargo you plan to load because this thing has a really high cargo capacity, but not everyone's going to use it that way. Some people might just want dog kennels or kayaks or e-bikes. Some people might want a four-wheeler or a Harley or a Goldwing or something like that. It's gonna really vary a great deal. So for some specific advisory, also if you need specific measurements, just give our team here a call. We are always happy to, uh, to get that extra information, some extra photos, measurements for you, whatever you need. And along the way, leave me some comments. Let me know what you like about this one, any questions you have, anything I can do better or different for you. And if you appreciate all the information we get, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and support our family owned and operated facility here. Let's get going, because this one is a lot of fun. And these things are just a testament to flexibility. There is no written rule that says, here's how you use it, here's how you have to use it. They've given you some things to give you some uh, you know, ideas, some functions. And I've got this kind of set up in between all sorts of different modes because if you are a, ooh, child, that sunshine to something else today, giving me some wicked lens flare, I don't appreciate that, but never mind all that. Uh, what are we looking at here? If you want to, both of these benches could fold up against the wall. So you could have yourself maximum loading space here if need be. That table is totally free floating. It can fold down between the two benches to create one big giant mega sleeper, which is awesome. It's like adult sized. Frankly, I think it folds down into a larger bed than what's up in the master room. You can use one or two benches independently. They can easily seat two to three adults comfortably. And that's what's awesome about this one. This is such a good, like, uh, one or two person run around getaway camper. But if you're going to have some weekend guests or something like that, you need that extra space in there. It, uh, or if you're just going to have some people over play some cards after a, a, a day of riding or something like that. It is a great entertainer's floor plan as well. Maybe they have one too many drinks. They don't need to be riding or driving home. You could sleep them for the night, send them home in the morning. And, uh, you know, if you don't want to have them over, what you do is you give them the phone number here to Halo RV and we'll get them their own RV so that, you know, they don't <laughs> try to stay with you all the time. That's a camping hack from your Uncle Josh. That's your Uncle Josh, the RV nerd. But here's what's so cool. Here's what I really like about this. If, if you don't need it as a toy hauler or once you get there, you unload your stuff, uh, it just becomes a nice couple's camper. You've got just a giant rear dinette, which is not a completely unheard of concept in the RV industry. Frankly, Cherokee does some things like that. They'll do some nice, you know, the, the normal RV things like add a uh, skylight up top here to let in some extra light, although it does have that nice uh, shade. So if you don't want to feel like an ant under a magnifying glass, you won't. And this, I think, is a big deal feature. Cherokee standard uses a centralized 15,000 BTU Coleman quiet air conditioner. And I mentioned that because in this class, uh, other, because Cherokee's not alone in this floor plan. Cherokee is really the one who, uh, in, in this class, brought this floor plan to us and made it very popular. But other brands that we carry here at Halo RV, Catalina, J Flight, uh, Wildwood, others that are in the industry, they also build this layout. So why would you go with this one? Well, would you like an air conditioner that works better? Because that's what Cherokee does standard. Um, a lot of people who build RVs in this class, a lot of manufacturers have a 13,000 BTU air conditioner, well, 13,500 if we're going to be technical, and it is potentially non-centralized. Cherokee Standard centralizes their air, and they standard give us a larger 15,000 uh, BTU air, and it is a Coleman quieter air conditioner that roars a little bit less, so you don't got to feel, you know, like Katy Perry's belting a tune and... You know, you get it, you get the reference, you get the roar reference in there. Never mind, it wasn't that great of a joke. Anyway, moving on, you get the idea. They standard, they use a quieter, more powerful, centralized air conditioner. Because think about it, if this RV was not centralized, I'm gonna spin you around like a record, baby. You've got a private bathroom, a private bedroom behind those walls. 
if that air wasn't centralized and pumping through those, you'd never be comfortable. It would never be comfortable in the summertime. That air would never get up there. Cherokee's just done a little more detailed job. Maybe because they've been doing this longer, they have some good insights there. These are all carpetless, easy cleaning. You see the tie downs, and uh, when we flip around, you see the tie downs go all the way up to the front kitchen. And this is, again, what's kind of cool about this. How do you want to use it? Do you need it for max loading space? Do you need it for max entertainment seating space? Do you want to flip that down as a sleeper? Do you want to take that table outside for picnic time? Um, if, uh, like, let's say you're just doing some kayaks or some e-bikes or something. You could just leave that bench up all the time. You could just leave this bench down all the time. You could slide some totes under it to expand your storage space. There's really, I mean, the only limit here is <laughs> what can you think to do with it? Because it can do it. Now we flip you around the other direction, give you a look. What's kind of cool here, you got a pretty nice kitchen space. And I like the way that they mounted the refrigerator as far forward as they could, because what that allows you to do is depending on what you have loaded, it, it could depend. If you got something that's very wide, it could block that fridge. But often, with the kind of things that people put into a, what I call a crossover camper hauler, like we're in right here, uh, it, it will still allow you to get to things like the fridge, the bedroom, the bathroom, unobstructed in transit. That giant window right there. I tell you what, you know what would be kind of a cool thing is if you actually put that uh, that that table over here in front of that window and then just had a couple like fold away chairs that you could bring out when you wanted, have just some amazing door side dining space. That's something that I would personally be very interested in. I think that'd be very, very cool. Now, uh, the uh, kitchen over here, they, they couldn't go too overboard with it. But overall, I think they did a really good job of not making it too... So it's, it's, it's got enough, I think. It's got enough of what it needs. Lots of easy reach outlets right there. That high-rise sprayer faucet. And keep an eye on that cutting board uh, as we uh, open up this cabinetry and give you a look all the way around. By the way, there are lights, uh, you know, for those overhead cabinets. Then additional lights just below that countertop space. You got that skirted stainless sink, some nice wastebasket space there. It's all these little details that a lot of RV brands tend to miss. The uh, refrigerator over here, Cherokee Standard uses a larger 10.7 cubic foot DC compressor fridge. Uh, that, uh, you know, with, with just the factory solar package that we're looking at today, and a single battery can give you, uh, it can keep that fridge running for about a week. Now, that being said, that's just the fridge that's just in high sun ideal circumstances. If your intention is to do some serious boondocking, you probably want to get at least an extra battery, maybe some extra solar, maybe a small portable generator. Hey guys, wouldn't you know it? A little suggestive selling here. <laughs> we can do all those things for you at Halet RV. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> and I tell you, a lot of times small campers, especially toy haulers, they don't have the best bathroom. This thing doesn't suck. In fact, I, I think this bathroom is, is pretty stellar for any camper, whether it is a, uh, a toy hauler or not. So, I mean, right away, right when you walk in, you see a nice larger radius glass enclosed shower. Something that actually gives people some decent elbow room. Um, now, in, in case you're curious, like, how much room is in there head, uh, headroom-wise? I'm about 6'3", standing in there. I do need my head in the bubble, but I can fit. It's it's good enough for me for, for a getaway weekend. I could live with that. Big medicine cabinet over here, because that's not just a mirror. That is a big medicine cabinet on the wall. And an equally large sink. Oh, um, just give you a, a look here so you can see, you know, there's not like a, a little Tootsie uh, Toaster warmer vent right in front of the, uh, the shower or anything like that. But well, last year, Cherokee had this like little motion sensor on the wall that was your light switch. You never had a manual light switch. People didn't like it, so Cherokee said, all right, you got it. There's your light switch. They're very in tune with their customers. They really pay attention. I, will, I love how they, they uh, put that shower surround paneling all the way up to the ceiling panel. You know, it's a bunch of little details like that that will separate brands A, B, and C, or whatever the case may be. Or here at Halet RV, we actually joke that we have half the alphabet. If you start going brands A, B, C, you got to keep going. <laughs> Great leg room in front of this toilet. Thank you very much, because if there's one thing your old Uncle Josh don't like, it is them twist them up bathroom yoga Olympics. <laughs> I don't know about you, I am not that flexible. And you see that larger vent fan that, like, that's the kind of stuff that, like, Rockwood does. And here you're getting it in a far more conventional class. And it's standard. That's what's nice about this. Just like the bigger air conditioner. The really important features, you're going to use, see, feel, and touch every day. Cherokee goes above and beyond with them. And frankly, I think they got a pretty good look otherwise. Anyway, now, 
Sometimes people get a little spooked by the, uh, the little slot over the bathroom door. And if you appreciate that kind of, th this sort of information I'm about to share, hit that subscribe button. You go, why? Why did they do that? Don't they know how to mount a door? The answer is they know exactly what they're doing. Heat rises. And right behind this door is our bedroom. So if you want to open those windows in the bedroom for cross breeze, but you don't want to leave the bathroom door open for ventilation or uh, potentially uh, a situation, <clears throat> if you know what I mean, you can leave this fan just a running and sucking that air, uh, that you know, the hot air that rises out of the bedroom, exhausting it and bringing nice, cooler air in through the side windows for spring and fall camping. Oh, that is a joy. And I know what y'all are thinking. Yes, but Lord Almighty, what's on the other side of that door? Well, I'm here to tell you, it is the cutest little bedroom suite couple newlyweds have a dead sea. Yes, sir. So if you are up here in the newlyweds suite, <laughs> If you choose to, you got TV hookups here. You saw them in the, the living room as well. You'll see a matching TV mount. You'll see another one of those outside. This actually has three areas where you could mount one TV and then easily shift and move it around. I love this big window over here on the camp side. It allows you, if you need it, you can you know sit up in bed. You don't really got to sit up in bed because it's such a tall window. You can like do a little security monitoring of your campsite. I got that shade drawn, but you can clearly see the center divider. That is an, uh, a max airflow opening window. And uh, the bedroom here, it is simple, but effective. But just like everything else, they always do just a little more than you expect in a Cherokee. Like they give you side stands and full length closets, so you don't have a sharp shoulder jabber. Nobody, you know, I think you folks get enough uh, of my jabber. You don't need your camper to shoulder jabber <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll work that one out in my own time. <laughs> but you've got household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. This set of outlets, though, is also a mount for a driven portable Bluetooth speaker. Very, very similar to a Furion lit speaker that um, I've actually talked about and done a separate video on. I can send you a link to that if you'd like. Leave me a comment and uh, I'll get that to you. By the way, leave me a comment anyway. What do you think just about the camper in general so far? Uh, you know, it's it's easy to look, I think, at the uh, corrugated aluminum skin on one of these and prejudge it, I think, mistakenly. You know, uh, there, there's a lot of good qualities here, a lot of easy to miss, like walk around uh, bedroom, bigger air conditioner, privacy. You know, there's some really good happenings going on here. What do you guys think of this thing? And, you know, the Black Label Edition gets a lot of love because it is just so smexy pants. But look at this. Tell me that does not look good. I don't feel like you're settling with the standard series here. Frankly, I, I mean, there there's some trucks that I think this will look very good. We got like a nice navy blue truck. Oh, the pairing of that would look tremendous. Just absolutely fantastic. Now, something I want to point out for you here. This is an optional piece of equipment, a spare tire. That is actually not standard on these. And you might be going, why is it just laying in the front compartment? Normally, spare tires would be found on that rear floating uh, or uh, fold down cargo rack on Cherokee RVs. Since this one with a ramp door can't have that, they gotta kinda just slide it in loose. Now, there are things like tongue mount uh, spare tire carriers that we can get for you here at Halo RV if you wanna you know, get it up out of the way. Sometimes those can be a little bit tricky when using a weight distribution system though, so we don't automatically slap them on. But no, if you need a solution, you don't want that free floating tire, there's ways that we can get around that for you. Um, the nose skin on this is extra thick. So if uh, your vehicle has some big off-road tires that are inclined to throw rocks or something like that, um, it's going to be really hard to, to dent this one up to have that little Woody Woodpecker looking front end, uh, you know, where he's like, <laughs> and bangs his face knife into that thing. Uh, all right, enough about Woody Woodpecker. Up front here, <laughs> we've got ourselves a uh, the Cherokee Quick Jack and the little uh, safety chain hooks and the plug buddy. But take a look at this. Eight seconds up and down is all it takes to operate that jack with a handy little cordless drill. And the same uh, hex nut adapter that operates that tongue jack will also operate your corner jacks. So you're going to be like your own one person NASCAR pit crew uh, getting this thing set up in like half the time of power stabilizers, which is a, a really nice thing. You might notice there's a battery in box in there. If we look just over the nose line, you can actually see the Cherokee Juice Pack solar panel sticking up at us in the pass through compartment. You might have glanced at the little charge controller that's included with that. That is a very, very good battery tender package. It's not intended to give you thousand percent function of the RV when off graded. It's designed to help keep your 12 volt uh, up and running to extend the lifespan. Um, it is slightly expandable. We have other uh, things that we can do for you to uh, assist you with the boondocking capabilities here at Halet RV. 
These are big time features that are easy to overlook. A hot cold outside shower, a black tank flush right next to the stinky slinky station. Little campers very often lack features like that or they might be optional. Cherokee does them standard. Now speaking of the stinky slinky, they give you a separate uh, you know, hose caddy back here because you do have limited outside storage on a uh, toy hauler because more of it is hollow for loading. There's less area for uh, you know, compartments to be able to put stuff in. So, you know, they got to get a little bit creative. You see that uh, ramp patio system set up here. That's actually standard on these. If I close that up, I want to give you a good look at the rear door. Uh, it also has uh, a positive cam lock system. Those are those black handles, and they have their own separate key locks on them, which is a, a really nice security feature, not to mention that they tend to hold themselves if you do forget to key lock them. They are... Not inclined to pop open when you're going down the road. You may also notice uh, that uh, handy flood loading light that a lot of times you only get in the bigger toy haulers. And again, this is a little bit of that crossover ramper in my uh, own little nerd speak. <laughs> you may have also noticed that um, uh, rear view camera. That is something that the Cherokee group as a whole has standardized and it is a factory standard item. Nice little safety item there. They even do that all the way down on their little wolf pups, which is cool. Speaking of pups, Got yourself a little pupper leash latch back here. Handy little thing too. If let's say you've got like um, some lighter weight things like uh, camping chairs outside, you don't have to use this just for the old doggo. If uh, you, you got a camp chair, it's gonna be a little windy overnight. You don't wanna have to take everything in and out. You can basically just kind of strap them, tie them to the camper so they don't go flying around the campsite if you're not you know, uh, around. Now out here, this has a pretty cool uh, outside entertainment area as well. The, the power awning, I didn't mention this inside, but the control panel actually has a, uh, a hidden version of the LCI-1 control. So the awning light, the awning itself, you can operate remotely from your phone if you want to. And remember how I said you have multiple uh, entertainment zones. This is yet another little uh, TV hookup space that you have right here. The uh, holding tanks are enclosed on this. And remember how we had that full viewing door in the entry window. I don't know if you were even consciously registering that, but you notice how you don't really see it out here. That is uh, what I call the Invisiview entry door. That is nerdism number one, two, three, four, five, six, thir 37, if you're paying attention here, if we are, we're counting them up. And the stable steps. <laughs> uh, I kind of get a little kick out of this. I try to call a spade a spade a duck a duck. They're the, they're they're fantastic. They're the same bore ride stable steps everybody uses. Cherokee likes to say though they have an exclusive version because theirs has their their emblem emblazoned upon it. So yes, I suppose in that respect it is an exclusive stable step. Uh, otherwise though, it is the the same stable step that everybody's using. <laughs> um, gosh. This is just such a good looking thing. The chassis on this, you might notice how it's only two steps coming in and out. Look at the A-frame, the tongue up front. You see how the A-frame actually integrates into the chassis? That is something Gray Wolf does a lot. And it helps them hug a little bit lower to the ground, which is a very nice way of keeping your overall exterior height lower in this. So if you're worried about, hey man, where I go, there's a lot of low hanging branches and stuff. This might be a really good option for you. So what do you think everybody, how'd they do? Overall, I think it's pretty sharp, obviously, because we continue to stock them here at Halo RV. I love the bigger air conditioner. I love the flexibility that this floor plan offers. I would like to see a little bit more interior height, but it has enough that I could walk around. It has the bubble in the shower. You know, I'd like to see a little bit longer bed, but that would also mean the RV would have to be longer and heavier and a little more expensive. So I think what they've done here is a really good balance. I understand that some folks might have some preferences either way, and I'd love to get your feedback, and I hope you appreciate the fair view that we uh, provide for you here at Halid RV. Down the line, if you need anything else, give our team here a call. We don't do hidden dealer fees, but we do everything else. So whether you need hitching pieces, parts, straights, finance, truck and trailer package, deals, RV delivery, or everything between, we only do everything. Please subscribe, follow along, support our business here, and folks, we sure appreciate it. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. But it was not 5,720 some odd pounds, as Josh had stated. As my friend Andy Dufresne from Shawshank Prison will tell you, it was in fact 5,275 pounds dry weight. Once again, Josh should get caffeinated before recording these videos. Thank you, and apologies for the confusion.